Hi, it's me, Mr. A, and today we are going to perform an experiment with air pressure. And our question is, what happens when air pressure decreases? What happens when air pressure decreases? Okay? For this experiment, we want to keep our previous knowledge in mind. So that's our problem statement. What happens when air pressure decreases? But we also want to list in the same section under our problem things that we already know. Now, one of the things that we already know is air pressure decreases with altitude. So as we go up in the atmosphere, air pressure decreases. Secondly, we know that the higher we get, the more altitude we have, that the colder it gets, particularly here in the troposphere. Now we know as we work our way up through the atmosphere, the temperature varies and goes up and down a little bit as we go through the various layers. But the troposphere is what we're worried about because this is where our weather occurs. So, both pressure and temperature decrease as we go up in altitude. All right, number three. We know that when a gas expands, it loses energy. It cools. Okay? So when a gas expands, it loses energy and it cools. So as we gain altitude, we decrease in temperature and pressure. And as pressure decreases in a gas, it cools. It loses energy. Okay? Now, finally, we know that as water vapor rises in the atmosphere, as it cools, it condenses and forms clouds. So, we know with altitude, we lose temperature and pressure. We know that with a decrease in pressure, that a gas loses energy and cools. And we know that when water vapor cools, it forms clouds, it condenses. Okay? So, for our experience, Experiment, <clears throat> this is what you'll need. You will need a wide mouth bottle, similar to this one. This one happens to be a Mott's apple juice bottle. You'll also need a valve stem. Now, those are obtainable at a local auto parts store. You're going to cut or drill a hole in the bottle's cap a little smaller than the diameter of the valve stem. And then you're going to push the valve stem through so it forms an airtight seal in the cap. You're going to take your bottle. You're going to get some rubbing alcohol. This is common household rubbing alcohol. We're going to use five milliliters of that. And I've already measured the five milliliters of alcohol here. Okay? So you need a valve stem. You need a wide neck bottle. You need five milliliters of rubbing alcohol. And the last thing that you need is an air pump. Okay? It's a very simple air pump. Now, what we're going to do is your procedure. Remember again, you drill a small hole in the cap, just a little smaller than the diameter of the valve stem. You push the valve stem through, get in there so it makes a nice airtight seal. Then, we're going to put in five milliliters of rubbing alcohol. Now, I've already measured it out. So we put that into the bottle. Okay, so it's like that. Okay. We tighten the cap so it's nice and airtight, just like that. Then we're going to attach it to our pump. Now, in this case, I've removed the little core from the valve stem because my pump doesn't have something to open that valve, okay? So I removed that. And this is just a little soccer ball pump. So now we're going to pressurize the bottle. We're going to do that with about 50 to 60 compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine, sixty. All right. Now, before I open the bottle, I'm going to place a dark piece of construction paper behind it Hopefully you can see better what happens. You ready? Here we go. You'll notice a nice white cloud is formed inside the bottle. I'm going to recap the bottle really quickly here. Okay, put that right on. And I'm going to repressurize the bottle. And I want you to keep 
an eye on that cloud as I increase the pressure inside the bottle. Keep an eye on what happens. Notice what's happened to that cloud now that I've repressurized our bottle. Okay? All right. So now you've seen what happens after we repressurize the bottle. Okay? So now we want to record our results. In this particular experiment, it's observational results. What did you see? What did you hear? Okay? That's what we're looking to find out. Then, as you write your conclusion, remember to tell me whether your hypothesis was correct or not. Tell me what you learned from this experiment. Briefly summarize the results. Tell me what we might have done that might have changed the results of the experiment. And double check your rubric to make sure you've got all parts of the lab complete. I look forward to seeing you in class. Bye for now.